Hey everybody! Welcome to my top three games that I would play with my nieces and nephew. This is my family-friendly Halloween game night idea. So I've got three games here to keep it in a shorter evening. You can get all three of my selections in in just two hours, I imagine. The games are lighter. The strategy is a little bit less than in my top five horror games for adults for Halloween, which I'm loving. It's a, maybe a little bit too intense. So make sure that you are an adult to play those games. But these games are super kid friendly. And I'm thinking anywhere between eight and 14. Those are the ages where my nieces and nephew lie. And we would have a blast playing these games. So here's the very first one. This is the, the game that I would use to open up game night to get us all having a really great time and because it goes up to six players, I could invite my sister and her husband to join us for a group of six, which is the max amount of players in... Ghost Love Candy 2. Yes, that's this game. Now in this game, players are trying to scare children into nabbing their candy and maybe getting some full-size candy bars in the meantime. And it's all these kids in the neighborhood, but you don't want to scare them too much because if you scare them too much, then they join you and they give you some negative points. So you want to scare them just enough to get that candy. Now there are player preferences and I think that's the coolest part about this game is that when you nab treats and candy along the way, not all the candy is equal to you as a player. You're probably going to like, let's say, candy corn, over peppermints and lollipops or gummy bears. It all depends on that preference card that you have. The other thing is that the game lasts for nine rounds. Players take their ghost cards into their hand and they play one secretly. They put it face down until everybody at the table has picked their card and then you flip it over and the person who has the highest number is going to get first dibs at scaring the kids in the neighborhood. And it goes down uh, from the highest number to the lowest number each round. So you only play those cards and you have one to nine. So once you play that nine, you don't have another nine. So you have just played your biggest card and from that point on you might have fewer or lower cards than other players in the game. But that's not bad because I have found that having a low number might be exactly what you need. So the round, just nine rounds, the game lasts a very short amount of time, super thematic with all the kids in the deck. The deck is enormous and these kids are so fun and they have so much flair. The artwork is just delightful. The treats you draw out of a bag and that would be fantastic for kids to, to do. Draw the treats out every time and you place the treats down along the kids. It's so, so family friendly and just lovely to play. I found it pretty fun. Okay, we are moving on to my second game of my family friendly Halloween game night. It is... Whirling Witchcraft. You better believe it. I'm gonna get my hat on for this. Okay, so in Whirling Witchcraft, players are drafting these cards. You're passing your deck and you're pulling a card out and using it, and then you're gonna pass it to the player to your right. So you have to pick from one of four cards in your hand to play out, and that's gonna be like a potion. It's gonna be a recipe, and you're gonna have ingredients that you have in your workbench that you use to activate your potion or recipe card. And then when it happens, you get all these other things that come out of it because you put it all in the pot together, and then you put it in the pot and you pass it to the player to your left as, as points, essentially. They have to add them to their workbench, which means they can use them as resources, as um, ingredients, but if you overflow that particular kind of resource, you get it as a victory point, as a point to win the game. And you've got to have at least five of those overflow points to trigger the end of the game. This is so filled with lovely witch themes. I love the cauldrons, the 3D cauldrons that you can pass around. I mean, come on, tell me that's not the coolest thing ever. I mean, kids would love that. And you put your cubies in there and then you pass it around. The witches that you get to play with, either the initiatives or the advanced witches, have such fun flair and color and flavor. This game is so colorful and vibrant with with witches and witch themes, and it's just so fun. But really, the base game 
is a puzzle figure me out kind of abstract game with witches as the focus but boy did they pick a really really great theme to put onto this because I think it works fantastically well and because it goes to five players you can have a really lovely big group playing this game passing cauldrons and passing cards and just having a fantastic time. Okay, and to end my night, this is my family-friendly Halloween game night. I've got a game that you may or may not be able to actually find, and I'm so sorry about it because it's a little older, but boy does it hold up. And it's got a fantastic Halloween theme. It is... Yeah, Fluch der Mummy. So I'm going to tell you this is Curse of the Mummy. And you might actually have the reskinned version of this, and it's about penguins and penguins on an ice floe. <laughs> so if you have that version, it doesn't necessarily scream Halloween, but this sure does. And let me tell you, it's got a wonderful, wonderful feel to it because one player, you guessed it, is gonna play the mummy. And the mummy sits on one side of the table and has a, a board kind of like battleship style. It's got, you've got a board between you as the mummy and everybody else on the other side of the table who play treasure hunters. And these treasure hunters are going to put their little figure down in this catacombs and they're all going to emerge from the catacombs and race around trying to grab their specific five treasures, one of each in a different location or region that's color coded. And the thing about this is it's hidden movement. So players are going to move their figures, their treasure hunters around on a board behind, but is attached magnetically, it's the same board, to the side that the mummy's looking at. And the mummy is going to and groan and move around on the path that mirrors what the treasure hunters are on trying to find them. You can get into this so easy. It's so, so, so much fun. And the cool thing about the game is that if the mummy goes into the same space as a player or players, the magnets snap up and the mummy holds them. And essentially you're like, I gotcha. And so you move into a space and because of the magnets, it goes and you get nabbed. And so you have like a free life that the mummy can get you. You have to go back down and start in the starting spot and try to race around again but the mummy is trying to nab uh, everybody before one person can get their five treasures. And it's just a race and it's hidden movement and it's just loads of fun. So I have a great time with this. It's just a fun one to pull out, especially if you've got a real showman, a real, you know, thespian behind the screen running the mummy who's just doing great sound effects and just having a blast with it. Because as the treasure hunters on the other side, you want to be quiet and secret and sneak around and uh, it's just got loads of fun to end the night. I wanted something to be fun and just silly and goofy and lighthearted because this is the game that you have stories about. This is the game you talk about the next day because of how fun it was. And oh, do you remember when you ran straight down that back hallway and you just drove right past the mummy? You didn't even know you were there and things like that. It's just a hoot. I think it's just a fun, fun game. And the perfect way to end my family-friendly Halloween game night, if I were anywhere near my sister, which I'm not, I'm halfway across the country, I would pack these three games up and I would head over on October 31st and sit down for just a couple hours with the kids, some popcorn and snacks, and play these games with them. So my heart goes out to my family and I hope you have a fantastic family game night. Uh, with all of your spooky themed games. Let me know in the comments below what you're playing for your family friendly game night and I will see you next time. Bye folks!